deal with him or not? I'm going to Captain Pim deal. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah. That's in my song. Yeah. yeah. That's right. Good evening. I would like to call the September 8, 2015, Davie County Commissioner's Meeting to order. This time, if you would join me in the invocation. Dear God, as we come before you this evening, we're reminded of all the many blessings of life that we enjoy here in Davie County. We thank you for the opportunity to govern. We thank you for the opportunity to live in the United States. As we come before you this evening, as always, we ask for your guidance in making the best decisions we can for all the people in Davie County. In your name, amen. This time, Mr. Barrett, would you lead us in the pledge, please? Yes, join me in the pledge, please. And a motion to adopt the agenda. So moved, Mr. Chairman. Motion to have a second. 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 All in favor, raise your hand. Five zero. Thank you. All right. Next, uh, we will go to public comments. All right. Next, we have a presentation, um, actually, <clears throat> for a resolution, a public hearing, rather, to adopt the resolution of the Davie County Home Health. Um, Mr. Ruff. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, tonight is a public hearing to take pub public comment on the board's adoption last month in August of a resolution of its intent to sell uh, Davie County Home Health. Public law requires at least one public hearing be held uh, for citizens to comment on that uh, proposed sale. No, no offer has yet been accepted or um, information has been provided to the commissioners and they're studying that but nothing yet has been accepted that would come much later in this process so that mr chairman we're just here to take co comments or questions citizens may have <clears throat> okay is there anyone here that would like to speak for or against the resolution All right, seeing none, I will declare the public hearing closed. There's no okay. action requested, Mr. Chairman. Okay. The next item is a public hearing <clears throat> and the CDBG grant, Ms. West. <clears throat> Good evening. The county has been awarded um, some funds from the U.S. Department of um, Housing and Urban Development uh, through the North Carolina Department of Commerce uh, Community Development Block Grant. And uh, this grant would enable the, our employees and public officials to attend high quality professional development and training with a goal towards improving opportunities for low to moderate income individuals. We were awarded $27,476 to participate in the UNC Chapel Hill uh, track School of Government's training package. This grant funds tuition, tuition and lodging for uh, eight seats and five in-person School of Government courses, as well as online training. We've already sent some employees to training for this. Uh, citizen input is an important part of a CDBG program. So the purpose of the public hearing is request public comments and citizen input. We have also requested input on the, the website as well as the Davie County Government's Facebook page. Thank you, Ms. West. Would anyone here like to comment for or against the CDBG grant moving forward with it? All right. Seeing none, we'll declare the public hearing closed. There's no action on that as well. The next item is a presentation on the policies of procedure in the county, Ms. West. 
Yes, this is also in regards to the Commerce Fellow CDBG program. Even though this grant doesn't directly benefit housing projects, uh, CDBG, uh, we have to uh, adopt policies, procedures, and ordinances uh, to be in compliance with the terms of the grant agreement. And everything that you have before you in the agenda is a readoption of a plan. The last time that we uh, adopted this was on June 6th of 2011. And this was in relation to, to the 2010 CDBG Scatter Site Housing Project. And I can answer any questions that you have about that. Anybody have any questions for Ms. West and the, or in the policies regarding how we apply and, and administer the CDBG grant? We're recommending the resolution be approved. Yes. Mm -hmm. Motion to approve the resolution. I have a second. <coughs> second. Mr. Barrett. All right. Any further discussion? Not all in favor, raise your hand. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Next, we have a presentation from Mr. Mr. Ruffin. Are you going to present? Well, Brian Bird, some of his staff members and Babbitt's Hospital representatives are going to come forward. This is a significant milestone, I think, that was accomplished in EMS, uh, led by Brian and several staff members in the hospital, particularly Dr. Nelson, who yes, worked on this. With that, I'll let Brian tell you more about it. Okay. All right. Thank you, Mike. Uh, we're here tonight to share uh, the results of a program we undertook almost two years ago. Uh, in June of this year, Dave EMS was uh, honored with American Heart Association's Mission Lifeline Bronze Award for Excellence in Cardiac Care. Uh, that was followed by the Race Cars Report Card. Uh, Race Cars is an acronym. I'm going to read it off, okay? Uh, it stands for Regional Approach to Cardiovascular Emergencies and Cardiac Arrest Resuscitation System. Now, that's just a long way to say we, we've got a plan for taking care of our cardiac patients here. Uh, this report was satisfying in the sense that it validates uh, with data a lot of the changes and, and um, procedures that we've implemented here in Davie County. And uh, to talk about the race cars report card, I have Amy Craver with me tonight. Amy is our representative from Baptist Hospital. Uh, she's the Heart and Vascular Center Outreach and Race Team Coordinator for Baptist. And so we're going to let her talk about the report card we got. Good evening. I do have um, a presentation to pull up here real quick. So I would like to take a moment to brag on Davie County EMS. I have been fortunate to serve not only as the Wake Forest Baptist Health Coordinator, but also the coordinator for the state of North Carolina. And I can say that I stand in one of the best counties in serving cardiac patients. Um, so you'll see here, this is the race cars report card. This is all of the agencies in North Carolina and the nation that report into this registry. And you can see Davie County EMS in green, and this is bystander CPR rates. It has been shown a direct correlation from bystander CPR rates and survival rates. For every one minute a person experiences a cardiac arrest, their chance of survival decreases by 10%. So you can see a great increase in Davie while uh, North Carolina and the nation remained about the same. This is also the overall survival rates, and you can see a huge spike in Davie County, which I'm very excited to share with you. You'll see this increase um, goes directly with bystander CPR, but this also includes patients that don't have Utstein survival, which are the patients that have the best chance of surviving, VFib, VTAC arrest. These are all comers of cardiac arrest that actually walk out of the hospital with a CPC of one or two, which means they're neurologically intact and can return to generally a normal life. So we're sending these patients back to their families. These are the Utstein survival rates, and those are the ones that have the best chance of survival, which are VFib and VTAC, which you also see have increased here. So I'd like to make some other points. Um, some of you in the room may know Mitch Wyatt or Terry Lewis. They were both individuals that experienced a heart attack followed by cardiac arrest. Both of those individuals are Davie County residents, and both of them have returned to their families in a normal life. Um, you can go to the Wake Forest Baptist Health Heart and Vascular homepage and actually see a wonderful video of Mitch Wyatt. So I encourage everyone to do that, and you can see what a great job Davie County EMS does. 
what happens with this oftentimes is the training officer in Davie County has been tasked with, tasked with training not only paramedics, first responders, and community, but also dispatch. I've had the experience and um, wonderful time training with Joseph Ashburn tra training the dispatch group here in Davie County. What they do is they go by protocol and tell the person over the phone if they don't know how to do CPR, they walk them through the steps. Terry Lewis's wife did CPR and saved his life because the dispatcher told him over the phone. So training goes far beyond normal business hours. I've been to countless events with Joseph and I'm very excited to say that these, this does have a great impact on lives here. Not only in the county, but when people are trained that are from other areas, if we go to corporation and train and they're a Davie County corporation or business, not all those people live here, so they take that to their counties too. But we say that 90% of the training is good for 10% of the job. Why do we say that? Not every call they run is an emergency, but we don't stop training our military when we're not at war, right? We train them all the time consistently. So training is a vital component of making sure that these responders are up on medical innovations and protocols. Countless hours are spent training these paramedics and first responders, and Davie County is one of the most innovative counties I serve, again, serving across the state and with Davie County. And it's led to instances in, in life or death, and I can say that showing this, we can see a lot of that as life. Um, I've seen firsthand as the state coordinator, oftentimes where some county off, um, operate under a general protocol, and it, they try to do their education kind of under a big umbrella. Well, it's very important to keep a focused education, a focused training specific to your geographic area, because stuff changes. And where, where you live should not determine whether you live. So that's how we should look at it. And also the importance of medical direction is vital. Dr. Daryl Nelson is also an emergency med medicine physician at Wake Forest Baptist. So I've served with him for many years. And seeing how much he works hand in hand with this agency and establishing new protocols and comes to these trainings and helps support your administrative staff and training officer has been tremendous and really speaks volumes to why these people are surviving and walking out alive. So these examples I've provided are only cardiac events. The training goes far beyond cardiac to trauma, stroke, um, all sorts of other diagnosis and I just want to commend Dave EMS for the tremendous job you guys are doing training not only the paramedics but um, also your first responders and community and way to go because this award is huge so congratulations Thank you, Amy. next up we got captain joe ashburn joe's our full-time training coordinator and like uh, amy said joe doesn't just train us uh, he's responsible for the training of all the first responders in the county and uh, joe's going to speak to us about the mission lifeline award tonight The award that Andy's sitting there holding is a, I guess, a national award. It's, it's a bronze award. It's, it's, this was our first year applying for it. We were able to get the bronze. We missed getting the silver by two patients. We don't want to go through and tell people what to go through and eat as far as fatty foods so we can get those two patients next time. But we want to make sure that we're, we're following all the data points, make sure that we're hitting everything that we're supposed to. And a lot of that's early recognition. It's getting out and, and teaching community events is teaching our first responders how to go through and recognize an SNR employees, how to recognize the cardiacs. We're taking them, getting 12 leads, that's one of it. We're taking the picture of the heart and actually transmitting this to the hospital. So the hospital can, it's going to cardiology, it's going to our administrative staff and different ones. And that way they're able to go through and see this. And there's times that we can actually bypass the ER and go straight to the cath lab with our patients. There's times that we've actually been too quick in getting there because they're having to wait in the ER on the cath lab and all their personnel to get there. Um, but we're look, as far as some of the data that we're looking at, we've got a possibility of silver in order to, and on the next one, and as far as gold, you have to have silver for two consecutive years. I don't see us dropping in what we're going through and doing. Um, Dr. Nelson couldn't be here tonight because he's actually doing training for Stokes County. He's a medical director there as well, and we're, change, we're changing some of our cardiac arrests, so it's, he's there doing their presentations. 
Um, but one of the things we're making a big focus on is team-focused CPR. We're not just loading the person up and taking them straight to the hospital. We're staying there in the house for 30 minutes and giving that person that best chance for survival as far as they're walking out of the hospital because this hands on the chest is one of the most important things that we can go through and do. One of the things we was able to get with Amy's help was a grant from the race cars program which we actually purchased mannequins and and defibrillators as far as trainers to give to each fire department in the county plus the rescue squad. So every every night that they've got a little downtime, they can go through and practice this team focus. It's just like NASCAR when they pull in for their pit stops. We're doing the same thing. You've got to practice in order to make it, make it better. Um, the other side of that was the fire departments are actually doing helping with community education. Whenever they have their fundraisers and different things, they're teaching people hands-only CPR, what to recognize, when to start. So that all goes back to part of the training and the grants, working with Baptist and making sure that we're excelling throughout. Um, but our cardiac arrest protocols are really making a big change and the survivals are hope is hopefully going to keep improving. Um, that one right there means a whole lot because you see where we we're way above everybody else and it's come from getting out there and doing the education it's, it's getting fire departments involved and and all and the administrator staff support in order to go through and do this thank you Jeff. we talked a lot about our system tonight i just want to make sure uh like these other guys said, we, we recognize Dr. Nelson. Dr. Nelson couldn't be here tonight, uh, but uh, he's been a driving force for changing the way that we do our business here. Uh, he's got new approaches to cardiac care. He's got new ways of teaching. Uh, I think it, some of it falls back to the fact he's old street medic. That's, that's where he started out at, so he knows how to talk to us. But we appreciate him, and um, uh, we appreciate you guys letting us speak to you tonight and share this with you. Thank you. Hold up. Yes, sir. Uh, I'm sure several, everyone up here would like to say something. Couldn't you mind? Please. <laughs> um, of course, Brian, Andy, I know especially knows this. Um, um, uh, three years ago, uh, I was uh, throwing batting practice to a group of uh, young men, and uh, I started having chest pains. And uh, decided, you know, I need to leave the field. And one of my coaches was taking me to uh, Davie Hospital. It was before the new hospital. Um, we were coming from Farmington Community. And, Mr. Chairman, I'm sorry, but I, I, this just lays into what Brian and him. Uh, we got to Farmington Exxon, and I lost consciousness. Uh, the coach that was with me called the dispatcher, uh, C.J. Dwiggins at the time. And uh, C.J. walked him through uh, get, getting me, keeping me where I was until you guys could get there. Um, you were there within seconds. He told Larry what he needed to do, go in the store, get this, get that, get it in me. Um, got to the hospital. Uh, as, as, as you all had indicated, literally went straight to the cath lab uh, because of the work you all had done. And the doctors told my wife that if we had made the turn to Moxville, not anything to do with Davy Hospital. It's the time. If we had made the turn and had not called you all, I would have not made it. So, you know, and of course, Andy knows uh, I had another heart attack 18 months later in about 15 inches of snow. You all had to park out on 158, come in with the stretcher, get me, get me out, get me back, same thing. And, uh, I, I'm just, I, I hate to say this, I probably kept y'all from getting the silver because I didn't have one this year, okay? So, but I, I'm sorry. I, I, I apologize. But I, I can tell you, I'm a walking testimony of, of you guys' professionalism and what you do every day. And I just had to tell you that, Mr. Chairman, because uh, 
I'm a, I'm a living experience of everything you just said, and I want to thank you. If I, I, I think I have paid in the past, but I want to publicly. All right, thank you, Mr. Jones. Anybody else got anything they'd like to say to Brian and his staff? <clears throat> Sir, I'd like to say congratulations on your achievements, and thank you for the service you provide for Davie County. I would also like to thank you for all you do for Davie County. And I had someone come up to me about a week ago and comment on how important it was for EMS. And they had a, a cardiac problem. And I think you folks had them in the ER over at, uh, at Davie Hospital and uh, convinced the person that was there at the time you needed to move them on in to the cath lab. I think that's very, very important because you don't always have the same doctors at the Davie East, uh, Eastern side of Davie County that you got down in the big house, as we call it. So he was very appreciative of that. We, we enjoy really good relationships for our local hospitals, and, and we're able to talk to them and, and help those things move along. Yes, sir. I want to express my appreciation as well. Um, I had a cardiac incident with EMS, not nearly as uh, <coughs> perhaps uh, dire as Mark's, but uh, a, a, a wonderful service to me and, and my family. So thank you. Uh, I have also a question, um, and, and I know y'all are doing a fabulous job. Will, will it help you when uh, Baptist comes online with the uh, with beds and the additional services at the uh, <coughs> at the new hospital in 2017? It'll help this community for sure. Uh, we're still going to be out there doing the same type of business. Uh, I think we'll have less transfers, so maybe we'll have more folks in the county more of the time. Uh, but um, outside of that, I, th I think we'll just be doing business as usual. Yes, sir. And perhaps get them to cardiac care yes, a little absolutely. quicker. Sure. Thank you. All right. Thank you, sir. Just say I um, appreciate all you do and certainly the innovation and you continue to bring to the table. We appreciate that. and. Um, and that's the same for the fire departments and the sheriff, but uh, we continue to innovate and find ways to improve service, and you know, citizens should be very thankful for that. So, so with that, thank you very much. Yes, sir. Thank you. Good job. <clears throat> okay. Next item on the agenda is the consent agenda. Anybody have any questions or comments about that? Motion to approve. Motion to have a second. 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 All in favor, raise your hand. Okay. Five zero. Thank you. <clears throat> Next, you move to the county manager's report, Mr. Ruffin. I thank you, Mr. Chairman. I have no report tonight. Oh, okay. Give you the night off. All right. Next, we move to old business, and uh, we have a presentation from Mr. Highfield and Mr. Lambert. Or <clears throat> so, we'll set the table for uh, Johnny and Tyler. This is uh, obviously old business that was discussed at the August meeting. They are here. If you have other questions that need to be answered, I think, uh, if I recall correctly, the board <coughs> postponed the decision until uh, tonight to give the matter. Uh, additional study. We have included some additional information uh, for you. Uh, you had asked for uh, cost of operations, uh, which was uh, provided to you uh, in an email, as well as uh, Mr. Jones, I think last week, had requested some cost information that um, I provided in the email as well and have um, provided that for you uh, to review if you have any questions. I have questions, but I'll certainly let Johnny and I was going to go over uh, the East Davy alternatives 3.1, the Yakin River Force Main. A total debt service was 15090000 Annual debt service, $1,041,000. And $8,000 uh, difference in operation costs from alternative 3.3. Turn to 3.2, uh, debt was uh, about uh, 
six, 15, six, uh, a million eight in annual debt service and $11,000 difference in operation costs. And alternative 3.3 was uh, the more expensive alternative at 17.43 million. That's cost of issuance all in, 1.2 million annual debt service. And of course the operational cost for that um, would be would not be applicable as the increases were measured against the operating costs for our alternative 3.3 for 3.1 and 3.2. <clears throat> Mike, how's the difference in operational cost calculated? Let Tyler it's, help us calculate the difference in operating cost. Sure. That was um, it was based on current average daily flows, wastewater flows um, through the existing facilities, using existing power bills. Um, and then we looked at it, what would be the pumping cost under each of the scenarios. Um, actually, we, we kind of stepped back and, and tried to look at what would be all the cost. And, and really, the differential cost comes back to, to pumping power cost. And so that's just looking at the horsepower of the pumps at each of the stations and the average daily flows. Well, is it based on the premise that you'd have um, more users on the system, or is it based on some other premise? No, that's just current based on current flows. So there's no projection forward of of growth or growth in flows. So those just I, just for my benefit, uh, why is the operational cost higher for 3.1 or 3.2 than for 3.3? Um, it basically comes down to how far each drop of wastewater gets pumped and how many times it gets pumped. So with 3.3, three, um, in essence, a single drop of wastewater gets pumped the least amount of times, and that falls out in the calculations um, is probably the, the best way I could explain it. Okay. But it's a very, fairly narrow difference in operational cost. That's correct, yeah. Thank you. I don't know if it's time to ask more questions. But, yes, yes. Think so. <laughs> but um, we had talked about, too, a question that had been raised about the differential. I mean, obvi obviously there's going to be a $2.3 million difference roughly between 3.3 .3 and 3.1 in capital costs, correct? Correct. All right. And, and we talked about there'd be some operational savings realized over time uh, if if the user base increases because of the additional basin being opened up, correct? And what um, what what number of gallons per day will have to be realized in order to make those two costs equal up? You're looking at a, about 177,000 gallons. Once once we recoup the money for 177,000 gallons, that will pay back the $2.3 million between 3.1 and 3.3. Okay. And and what's the current uh, usage? Was it 500,000 um, A little gallons. over 500,000 gallons is what's allocated. Average daily flow was about 265, 270. Okay. And this uh, 176,000, which is roughly another third on top of existing users, um, that would be independent of uh, Bermuda Run residential and, and current usage as projected, correct? It would have to be coming from additional growth in the town center and other areas? It could be additional growth or users that are existing users tying to the facilities or you know, growth down 158. Residential expansion anywhere in the, in the area? Residential, commercial, correct. Okay. Do you have a projection as to when uh, that 176,000 gallons would be realized. I don't um, think you have a crystal ball, do you? <laughs> you know, depending on, on what is built, commercial facilities, uh, you know, there were some box stores that looked into coming to Davie County a few years ago before um, I took over as director, and I know they were looking at a total of about 150,000 gallons. You get something of that nature, it pays it back pretty quick. Um, you know, if you just move along with the 1% growth we are now, it's hard to project when you get that back. So, uh, 
you know, depending on what comes and when it comes and economic development. So it would, it would all play a little part into it. Johnny, I wanted to ask something to uh, take this question a little bit farther. Sure. Um, I know year after next we're supposed to have Baptist Hospital online over projections as to what their usage is going to be and also uh, we have sewer reserve for Creekwood. That's correct. Up above there. Do we have any idea uh, based on the number of houses in there what that need would be? Um, off the top of my head I want to say Creekwood has about 40,000 gallons that was put back in allocation for that. Um, Baptist Hospital was allocated a total of 57,500 57, gallons back when the hospital, before the hospital even built. Uh, some of that allocation Bermuda Run had, they give to the hospital and Davie County give $40,000 to the allocation. Baptist Hospital paid for allocations already. So. Is that allocation for Baptist already part of the 500000 Yes. Okay. And is the Creekwood allocation part of the 500000 Correct. Okay. So we're going to need an initial, initial additional 176000 Correct. Okay. And just sort of closing the circle for me in terms of understanding, um, there have been discussions with Bermuda Run, as I understand it, about uh, their participation in this venture. Is that correct? There has been some discussions with Bermuda Run about tying their pump station to the Davy system and begin gaining their customers, yes. Okay. And and there's a capacity fee unit for any any entity coming onto the system, is that correct? That would be correct. Bermuda Run would be a customer just like anyone else and they would pay the same thing that any customer coming to Davy County tying to the sewer system would be the thirteen dollars a gallon. And do we have an agreement with Bermuda Run at this point for that $13 a gallon? Not at this point. Bermuda Run was introduced to it, and it was talked about with the Utilities Committee and Mr. Ruffin last week. And then I'll, I'll uh, maybe ask one more question. Um, so the other thing is on capacity decisions, and I think Ms. McGonigal alluded to this, um, the county currently has um, has control of capacity. In other words, we decide when allocation of sewer capacity is made or not, correct? It comes in front of the board, yes. Right. So it's a board decision. Correct. Uh, and have, have we considered, has, has it been uh, studied or considered as to whether or not we would con continue to retain um, say so mm -hmm. over that sewer allocation? We would always retain the sewer allocation unless the sewer allocation is paid for by someone. It would be up to the board. It would be up to the board, yes. All right. So currently, um, if anything passes, it's up to the board. Is that correct? Yeah, any, any allocation that is to be sold or to be anyone tied to the system in East Davie that gets an allocation would come from the board, yes, on the consent agenda. And there's there's no there's no discussion about changing that. Not from relates? my understanding. Any allocation that comes to me would be put on the agenda to go in front of the board. Uh, Bermuda Run has asked um, if they were to purchase um, capacity, would this board be willing uh, to grant that? And they were told on Thursday that that would be a board decision. It would have to be made regarding that. I think they're meeting on the 28th, uh, if I remember. I'm trying to think, 22nd. 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 And they're going to um, come back and tell the Utilities Committee exactly what they want or don't want, and then they'll have to bring that forward in the way of recommendation for you to consider. So really, we don't, we don't have an answer from Bermuda Run on my, my layman's term, no. cost sharing no. in terms of cost sharing what decision they would <clears throat> might they might make we don't have an answer from Bermuda run in regards to the issue we just we we just discussed uh, and the reason that that's a little bit of a concern for me is um, recently there was a project that was proposed for uh, the community out there that I think I think uh, was supported by no one 
Uh, and what concerns me is the potential of uh, the potential of use of capacity to expand a project like that without uh, uh, without any checks and balances. Uh, so uh, that would concern me a little bit uh, in well a lot in terms of the overall future uh, of that community because. We can have, and, and this is a little more theoretical and broad, we can have discussions about sustaining the system and it being self-sustaining. But the issue of schools, the issue of pressure on uh, our public servants, law enforcement, EMS, fire, these are all issues that, the, the over, the, that all the taxpayers in Davie County have to, have to deal with. So to me, uh, I think we need some, um, I, I would ask, have there been any public hearings in Bermuda Run about this, uh, it, within that community, about what we're about to do? Have there been any, is there, to there, my, there been any, To my knowledge, there's been no public hearings. No public discussion about, about that. Um, so really, at this point, we're talking about approving tonight uh, an issue uh, which is basically a partnership, but we don't have any decisions from one one half of the partnership. Uh, and I know that's not you guys. <laughs> that's more of a statement than a question. Uh, so I, I would ask then this question, Mr. Chairman, uh, and I know we put it off uh, last month, uh, uh, Mr. Ruffin, but is there is there an urgency on us voting on this tonight? Prior to the Bermuda Run, folks having having uh, discussion over the questions that have been brought up. In my opinion, there's an urgency. Then what we're doing this evening is just choosing the path of the sewer, and we the urgency, as I see it, is to engage formally Mr. Highfield's firm to start doing the drawings to complete the shop drawing so we can get the thing bid and move on. Um, to me, that is the the urgency. We've been talking about it for some time, and uh, to me, that is we just need to move. Well, I, and I understand that, and I'm, I'm 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 completely supportive of you, Mr. Chairman, in, in this regard. That I think we do need to do something out there, but I, I I think you know if we have new questions that are brought up in the process as we move forward, then we need to address those questions. And I don't know if we've been, uh, we have been talking about it, but I don't know if the folks that are going to be directly impacted by the decision we're going to make tonight, uh, the folks in that community out there, and then the taxpayers of Davie County that are going to have to fund uh, the infrastructure needs that, that possibly could come from uh, what might be exponential growth. Uh, based on uh, uh, going with 3-3, three, three, uh, I don't think it hurts to have, to be transparent, to be open, to, to listen. We, we sh I think we found that out from the issue of East Davie Sewer, that we need to hear from all the constituencies. And I, I'm not sure we've even heard from the elected officials at Bermuda Run and I know we haven't heard from necessarily the citizens of that community. So, um, I, I mean, I, I can't see how it would hurt to uh, to wait another month or less than a month once to, to allow Bermuda Run to have their conversation about this. Uh, I guess I'd like to understand I mean, Mark and I are asking questions here, but, you know, it takes five to tango in this case. I mean, and, and I think I'd like to sort of engage in a dialogue about whether there's any uh, willingness to um, make 3.3 .3 contingent upon commissioners continuing have, to have a say about sewer allocation uh, in partnership with Bermuda Run to the extent it's in the town limits or ETJ uh, and contingent upon uh, Bermuda Run agreeing to the capacity fees and, and other fees because right now we're, we're 
we're putting the cart a little bit before the horse. We don't know exactly where we are in this dialogue. I think this dialogue is important, and I think it's in, in a perfect world be better to have those agreements prior to deciding which route to take. But at a minimum, I would think we'd want to have an understanding as to what the uh, mechanics are going to be of that. In other words, what would happen if, if, for instance, Bermuda Run said to us, uh, no, we, we're not willing to pay $13. Or, and I don't know that they wouldn't, but what if they were to say, no, we want to have sole decision making as to um, capacity. And we've voted on a plan without having an understanding with our partner here in Bermuda Run. So why would it not be possible to either do what Mark's saying and just have that conversation and get an understanding there, or B, make whatever we do tonight contingent upon those, um, those scenarios? Can I say something? Sure. What we're talking about tonight is we signed an agreement six, seven, four or five months ago now for five million gallons of sewer for eastern Davy County. And what we're talking about is how to get that from eastern Davy County to Forsyth County and the best way to do that. Now, how much did Sheets just pay you for capacity? Um, Sheets was about 8,500 gallons a day, um, $110,000. $110,000. All right, the church on Baltimore Road is paid a, uh, a, it was a pretty good capacity thing. About $26,000. It's on the agenda. Okay. About $26,000. Not the, the, the amount's not really important right now. What I'm saying is, what we've been operating under a policy here ever since I've been on this board that sells the capacity. So if Bermuda Run wants capacity, they're going to obviously buy it, just like Sheets did, just like the church did. What we're trying to do, if we've got five million gallons, which is what we've got, if we can sell that five million, we don't have to sell that five million gallons. All we have to sell is about two million of it, and it'll pay back the $17 million that we're talking about. But what we need to do, if we don't get on with this, we, we, we're running into a calendar problem. We got a timing situation here. There is some issues and Tyler can speak to this better than I can, but there's issues with the sewer treatment plants that have to be upgraded in 2018 or 19, somewhere along there. And what we're trying to do is get moving, and all we're asking for tonight is to decide on the route we're going. Then you would have no problem with the, con with the contingent issues that Mr. Barrett indicated then. Once, once we sell the capacity to Sheets, we have no authority to tell them what they can do with it. Would we, the same thing is true if you sell it to Bermuda Run or anybody else, in my opinion, because once you, if the Sheets decides that they're not going to build a Sheets station there, but they're going to build a high-rise apartment complex, I don't think we can do anything about that, personally. Oh, I, oh, well, no, I, there, there's there's attorneys in the room, but I don't well, I don't believe that, Mr. Well, Ferguson. I, I, please, I, I'm just. We, I, I would she, add, she just buying it. Is what can I'm I saying. can I ask you a question? The issues that Mr. Ferguson just brought up about uh, the timelines would waiting three weeks impinge upon those uh, timelines. The um, we're we're getting pushed, frankly, beyond my comfort level already. Um, the, I think the key date is April 2017 is the agreement in which construction needs to start on this project. That's the agreement with uh, Forsyth City County Utilities in Forsyth County. So that seems like a long time, but 17 months to go from scratch to mm. plans and specs that have been permitted and gone through a bidding process and easements obtained is a a really tight schedule um, and we've we've laid all that out um, in the discussions well let me so, be clear I'm not asking to delay it you know one minute I'm just asking whether there's a consensus for the contingencies that I outlined that being that the 
the commissioners continue to have a say so over sewer allocation, A, and that we make the uh, whatever we vote on contingent upon Bermuda Run, uh, uh, Bermuda Run's agreement, which is their right to either give or not to give, um, to the um, capacity uh, fees that we uh, <coughs> have suggested. And, and I know that y'all have met with him, John, um, and, and at that point, agreement wasn't reached. And I'm not trying to you know, hold it up, but I, I do hear from you, and, and don't let me put words in your mouth, that you feel like we should cede control over uh, sewer allocation decisions to Bermuda Run once we, if and when, they agree to pay the $13 capacity fees. Is that what I'm hearing from we you? We have no choice but to do that. Oh, now, certainly we do. No, we don't. If you sell them the capacity, they ha they have the right to do with it what they want to, just like the sheet store does. Well, the sheet now, store is a, is a sheet store. Right. Bermuda Run is going to have development in town center. And I'm, at that point, certainly, uh, the potential interest of the two entities could go in different directions. Let's say, for instance, Bermuda Run had a vision for development of town center. That would be good for Bermuda Run. But it might impose infrastructure costs on the rest of the county. Did, if that were the case, and we were to have ceded our ability to uh, determine sewer allocation, we would not have no say-so whatsoever in the cost that would pay, be passed on to the Davie County taxpayer. Now, I don't think you want that to happen. Well, now, let me ask you this question. They, there was just a fairly large apartment complex built up here north on uh, 601. Now, did the county commissioners have any say-so about the sewer that went up there? what was done? I would assume that was because at some point in the future, the county fathers had given that control to Mockful. So, sometime in the past. In the past. Yes. But we so have a chance to chart the future. We're not, we're not tied to the decisions of the past. Well, I can, t from my, my opinion is, and I feel very strongly about this, once they pay for it, it's their decision what they do with it. It's not, I don't think you can sell somebody something and say, I'm going to keep control of what, how you do it. Well, what if it was joint decisions? What if, what if there were a joint well, process where by both parties would get together? Because you know the interests could diverge. You, it absolutely could, but you don't have that with Moxville. Why do you want it with Bermuda Run? I wasn't in, in office at that time. I can't speak well, to something that happened 20, 30 years ago. Actually, Moxville had their sewer long before the commissioners ever came good along point, with, Richard, with sewer. <laughs> good, good background and history on that. Uh, I mean, we're doing something fairly unique here. I mean, a county sewer system is, is not the way that everybody rolls. I mean, a lot of times it's municipalities that do, do sewer. And as you point out, Moxville did it originally. Um, I think it's an important uh, development and I supported 3.0 because frankly I supported that because we met a pressing need. The pressing need was Forsyth County was going to cut us off unless we found a way to get sewer to the, the Muddy all Creek all the, station, that. right? And, and that's what we were talking about at that time and that's the reason I supported that time. Now this is a, you know, sort of a horse of a different color and I'm not saying that we shouldn't be supportive of growth and balanced growth. And I think we will be, and I think future boards will be. But I think when we're investing close to $20 million in sewer for this county, we have an obligation to the citizens not to retreat and not play a role in the future growth and having a say-so as to the future growth that's going to affect the property taxpayers of Davie County. Well, that's just like saying Precise should come over here and tell us where, what we should do, although they, they're going to treat our sewer and they should tell us how to, what to do over here. Well, they're telling us quite a bit as it is, well, I can assure you we're, that. We're not, we're not asking for the, I don't think, the policy issue. What, what I thought was on the agenda was the route. Th that is what's on the agenda. And what, when 3.0 was conceived, the issue was we weren't told we had to get out of Forsyth County. We were told if we didn't get out of Forsyth County, we were going to be paying two times the inside city rate. So Plus a penalty for well, that. Plus that million dollars plus the penalty to get out of Tanglewood pump station plus all these extra fees they wish to add I won't say arbitrarily but they certainly in talking to Mr. Lambert they certainly are 
not bashful about adding fees to our monthly bill. So that was one issue. The second issue is we were going to be constrained by what we could send to Forsyth County without some major upgrades to the system that we had. So I think the, how we got to 3.0, I differ a little bit with you, Mr. Barrett, on how we got there. Um, well, but we were not yeah. talking at that time about the route of the sewer. What we were talking about was meeting that immediate need. And I, well, I grant you, that philosophically, there is a good argument for expanding it, and 3.3 .3 is a very viable option. In fact, I could support it under certain conditions. But I'm not willing to support it if the county is giving up uh, any say-so in the growth of that area in which we are uh, granting sewer. And, and to be quite frank with you, Mr. Chairman, in regards to the context of Mr. Ferguson's statement to, to Mr. Barrett about Forsyth County, Forsyth County doesn't fund the unfettered growth of Davie County. They don't fund our schools. They don't fund our uh, law enforcement. They don't fund our EMS and our fire departments that are pressured by uh, unfettered growth. So that's, I mean, that that's not even that's apples and oranges but uh, th these are all tied together and I fully believe that you know all entities will act in a responsible manner I'm not concerned about finding these partnerships to come to resolution I'm just saying that we don't need to step away from the table on something that is a vital concern to Davy County it's gonna affect property taxpayers in Davie County and it is possible that interest could diverge and if that's the case and we have we have basically uh, excused ourselves from the discussions people are gonna look back at us and say what the heck did you do and you recall John the last time when we passed 3.0 and then you know three weeks to a month later we get an apartment you know complex People drew a conclusion from that, right? And I'm not saying that Bermuda Run doesn't have the right and shouldn't be involved in the process of determining growth issues. I'm just saying we should be a partner in those discussions. Well, there was a Bermuda Run built back, what, 45, 50 years ago. There was an Oak Valley built about 25 years ago. There was a Kenderton built, you know, 15 or so years ago. There's going to be more of those, and we're not going to stop it. Not and, to stop. and whoever's sitting in these seats won't stop it. So progress is going to happen, and we, there's nothing we can do about it. What I think we're asking for tonight, what I understood we're asking for tonight, is the route to get this thing running. And the procedure for how we deal with the allocations, I thought, was coming up next month, hopefully. Well, so, and, and that, but it's sort of like incremental, you know. I thought, you know, when we passed 3.0 that we were dealing with a pressing problem of making sure we had sewer, you know, and, and this is a perfectly legitimate approach. I'm not saying 3.3 is a perfectly legitimate approach, but when you get things, it's, it's the law of unintended consequences. You've got to look ahead and try to look ahead and see how your decisions now are going to impact decisions down the road. And I think if we don't try to be engaged in that process, then, then I think we're sort of going to be making a decision and then we're going to have all these tentacles springing out that we never intended to have. I think we made a major mistake in getting 5 million gallons of sewer if we think that we, the county commissioners are going to control growth in the county with sewer. Not trying to control growth, just trying to have a place at the table. The property taxpayers of this county, John, I mean, I just don't think they want us to step away from that. Well, that is a policy decision that we can have subsequent to tonight. But what is on the agenda tonight is the path of the sewer. Well, I'll make a motion, and I'll make a motion to support 3.3 .3, contingent upon the county uh, maintaining its um, its place and role in allocation of sewer and that there's agreement with Bermuda Run on that and the issue of capacity fees. And if, and if that, that will make that as a motion. Mr. Chairman, I'll second. Yeah, we have a motion and a second. Um, open floor for discussion, further discussion. 
I will say that I agree with Mr. Ferguson that if you sell someone capacity, that capacity is theirs. Um, I'm willing to listen, but uh, for, that's a policy issue, and, um, and you know, that needs to be hammered out. But uh, as I sit here this evening, um, if you sell someone capacity, it's theirs to use. Well, Mr. Chairman, I would say the best way to control the use of the sewer is not to sell the capacity to to a person that you would not want uh, developing in the county. And that's what we have the ultimate control of. Uh, if, if we want to determine what Bermuda Run does with their capacity, we sell them enough to do what they need to do right then. Then if they want to come back later and present a, a program to us, uh, we can sell more capacity. But the best way to have control of anything is to just not sell it until you get to review everything that's that's on the table. Well, that certainly could be introduced into the policy discussion. Well, well, I agree. We're not talking that tonight. Right. We're talking the 3.0, 3.1, or 3.3. On the route. Simply the route that the sewer is going to take. But I, I do think that... It, Richard, I'm not quite sure your position on that. It's sort of a hybrid, but uh, I do think that, that John and Terry have, have indicated they support, you know, giving uh, Bermuda Run total control over capacity decisions uh, if we pass 3.3. So we really, you know, and, unless we vote for this, we really are just defaulting to that position. I mean, because un unless you take a contrary position to them, um, I mean, that's, that's really the gist of it. So I think it's important to get this out on the table. I respect different points of view on this, and there are, are solid, you know, perspectives, and I, I appreciate that. I'm just saying I think we would be wise if we passed 3.3 .3 with these contingencies that I've outlined in this motion. Okay. I would disagree, Mr. Barrett, that it's not a default position. I think it can be dealt with in the policy. But you have said that you think that they should they should have complete control. Once we grant them the sewer, they should have complete control over that. And I believe that brings on the potential for different uh, interests, uh, for instance, the infrastructure costs and the other things that could occur that could put a burden on county taxpayers that, that may or may not be a primary interest of municipality that doesn't have to deal with building schools and infrastructure that the county has to pay for. But what I'm saying is if you craft the policy, step the next step, then perhaps you introduce some of, like Mr. Poindexter pointed out, maybe you at the table reviewing plans before you sell capacity to Bermuda Run or to XYZ developer. Okay, but let's have that agreement and understanding before we vote on a particular uh, plan of action. That policy, yeah. I mean, I mean, we should have had a vision out front of this to develop that policy. Okay, any other comments? Okay, we have a motion and a second. Mr. Barrett, would you restate your motion? Sure. Um, I'll paraphrase my motion. That'd be great. Um, basically, it is to pass 3.3 .3 with the contingency that um, the county uh, continue to have a place at the table as to sewer allocation decisions um, and that uh, there be agreement with Bermuda Run as to, to that point and as to the $13 uh, capacity fee that uh, has been proposed. Motion and a second. All in favor of the motion, raise your hand. Two, all opposed, raise your hand. It fails three to two. I'd like to make a, a alternative proposal, and that would be to adopt the uh, suggestion of Commissioner Poindexter, which would be that uh, at this time <coughs> there be um, the contingency would, would remain about the agreement on the $13 capacity fee, but the contingency would be, the other contingency would be that the allocation uh, to permit a run at this point uh, be for the um, current needs 
um, for the area that uh, the sewer would serve. In other words, that there be a uh, an allocation commensurate with current usage by Bermuda Road. That is not my. That was not my intention with saying this. I think that needs to be under policy discussion. All right. So if, if that's this not is simply a route that we're deciding the sewer should go. Okay. If, if that's not your intent to offer that, then I'll withdraw my motion. Okay. Do I have another motion? I make a motion that we adopt the route of 3.3 .3 and that we deal with the policies and procedures of how we're going to deal with the allocation in our October meeting. So we can get started on this 3.3 .3 and get Tyler to work. Okay. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Mr. Chairman, I'm going to second that motion. I, I realize time has passed since we first started the discussions about this, this sewer. <coughs> I didn't realize that 17 months was what we had left. Next month will be 16 months. But I'm going to second the motion to a uh, adopt 3.3 .3 because I feel it's the least expensive in the long run for us. Okay. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion on this motion? I just say that I support, will support, and can support 3.3, .3, but I think um, we've already, at least the majority, have already indicated uh, on these discussions that we're going to have in October uh, which way the wind is blowing. So I think it's sort of uh, it's sort of like putting the cart before the horse to uh, to vote on this without having those agreements and understandings in place. You can't vote to 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 uh, for 3.3 .3 or really 3.1, 3.2 without some policy already in place. I mean, uh, I I don't want to be redundant about this, but that that's there's we have uh, we have no answers to the questions that we've asked. And what's going to happen on on uh, uh, September 22nd if if every proposal that we bring forward is rejected? So what do you do with that policy then at the in the, the first month of October, the first Monday in October? Do you just um, well we just mold it uh, to fit uh, the rejections? Uh, that we possibly might get on uh, September 22nd. So th there's, uh, that's like, that's like, well, I don't want to get. I, you, I think we do have a policy in place. We got a policy in place that says the commissioners have to approve any allocation and you sell it right now for $13 a, a that's gallon. That's correct. That's that's, correct. That's, that's any, a policy we've been operating on for the last four or five months. So there is a policy four in place. Months. Well, and I support bringing the policy if it's ready in October. Absolutely, and we work towards that. But, Mr. Ferguson, would you entertain a friendly addendum to the motion that as soon as practical, but not later than November? Okay. I want. We need to move on this project. And as far as the timeline, the policy is not. Is that going to impact the timeline? No, the policy shouldn't impact the timeline for Tyler to get started on the project with the route. Okay. So what is the friendly amendment? Taking out the October. So the policy won't have to, we don't have to have the policy by October. We'll make it November. Or I'm I'm willing to say when it's practical is the policy. Well, that's where I was headed. Yeah, that's fine. When practical. I'll go along with that. Well, independent of the philosophical like issues that I think we've debated sufficiently, um, to, to Mark's point, um, and I don't know that Premier Run's going to say uh, no, but, but why wouldn't it make sense to have an agreement? I mean, what if they were to say no, then we're going to be back at the drawing board trying to craft something? I mean, a lot of these, these, uh, these premises are based on Premier Run participating in that $13 capacity fee. And, and I trust that that will uh, be adopted. But what if it were not? What, what would we do then? We have a, a lot of 
there's a lot of property laying what I call west of Bermuda Run today. For instance, this church that's hooking up. But that would be the case regardless of whether we adopt 3.3. I mean, they're getting on the existing sewer system. Right. But 3.3 makes more sense for that part of the county. I get you, but I'm just saying, what, what are you going to say to us if you come back from the meeting with Bermuda Run and you don't have agreement? Where, where does that leave us? We've adopted 3.3, but we don't have but it, agreement. It would be my opinion that 3.3 makes the most sense whether Bermuda Runs participates or not because it opens up arguably more of the county and provides a better plan long term. Well, we at least leave open the, the possibility of, of discussing 3.3 if, if our, our hopes and aspirations don't get realized. That would only be prudent. Okay. Can any wait, wait a minute. Now, these gentlemen got to get started working on something. 3.3 is, they got to start giving us some places and numbers and all this kind of thing. But if this motion passes, that's what they're going to right. commence doing. Okay. I but but I, th I think, you, you know, <laughs> I don't want to belabor this, but, you know, let's, let's say, you know, we're, we're already... We're already charging existing users a higher rate to, to cover this $2.3 million, okay? And so if Bermuda Run didn't participate at the level projected, then we're talking about existing users carrying the freight for uh, growth in town center. Uh, and, and they're going to be paying basically a higher mortgage the financing cost over a period of years without any participation. I mean, I don't know when 176,000 176,000 new gallons is going to be obtained, but it's not going to be overnight, and it's probably not going to be in the next five years. So that's why I'm asking the question. I mean, if we're just sort of saying 3.3, you know, come heck or high water. Um, that's that's not really the best way to go from where I come from. And I, and I understand your point, Mr. Chairman. It, it, it may be the most opportune way to, to expand growth in, into that area of the, of, of the county, no question about it. We can't even come to an agreement about law enforcement and the cost of law enforcement for that area of the county. Now, uh, and I just use that as a point to say that, 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 that what we're doing here has consequences. It has long-term consequences. It has financial consequences, not only to the citizens of that community, but to all of the citizens of Davie County. And so uh, just, just, just kind of uh, molding this thing to the people that all we're talking about is uh, the direction of uh, uh, sewer is, is not quite true. If it were, then we would be looking at we would be looking at different options. So there, there are ramifications to this far beyond uh, far beyond the discussion tonight. It, it's not just about the direction of sewer. Uh, it's about the direction of growth in that in that community and and what kind of discussion there will be about it and I certainly respect all the planners in the Bermuda Run area but it has impact on all the taxpayers of Davie County not just those folks I think it's going to have a major impact on the users of the system if we don't come to some sort of agreement which we don't have when we're going to vote on this tonight but it will have long-term consequences to all the taxpayers of Davie County not just those folks in center, uh, uh, the center of the business community out there. So I, I think we just need to be aware of that. Unless I am mistaken, the town of Bermuda Run passed a resolution a couple of years ago. I was not on the board at that time. I was not on the that said they would participate in whatever happens to Eastern Davie County for the sewer. And I think they talked about a million dollars or more that they would participate. And that resolution is still not, nothing has changed. It's still, the county still got that. So to say that Bermuda Run is not going to participate, I think you're worried about something that doesn't make any sense. That's Personally. not what I said. 
I said this will have ramifications on all of the taxpayers of Davie County. I didn't, in, I didn't indicate that. Everything we do has ramifications for every taxpayer in Davie County. That's exactly but that's what right. But what we want to try to do is get as much business and as much industry in the county as possible to help all the taxpayers in Davie County. That's my goal, at least. And that end of the county is paying a considerable amount of the taxes in, in Davie County today. And it's paying, you know, a very large proportion. But that's... No one is that. impugning that. No one is indicating that. We're not... All my point is we're not just talking about the direction of a sewer line here. I understand. Okay. That. And we all want growth. Uh, I can tell you... Uh, most of our days are spent trying to bring growth to Davie County, but it has to be, it has to be, there has to be some vision to it. Right. Okay, any other comments? Okay. Ms. Moyer, would you state the motion so we're all clear here? The motion is to adopt the route of 3.3. .3 with the policies and procedures for the allocation to come before the board when it's, practic when it's practical, possibly that in the November meeting. I think, I think the as soon as practical <laughs> replaces the November. What was the last caveat? By November. What 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 was going to come before us? Policy. Which policy? Sewer policy. David County sewer policy. That's what we said was going to redo. Yeah. Um, well, I can support 3.3, .3, but I can't support 3.3 .3 without having understandings ahead of time as to what it means. Yeah. All right. Anybody have a question about the motion that's on the floor? Okay. All in favor of the motion, raise your hand. All opposed? It passes 3-2. Thank you, Mr. Lambert. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Next item is new business. Do we have any new business to come before us this evening? If not, the next item is commissioner comments. Mr. Jones. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I wanted to uh, thank everyone and Sheriff and, and our EMS brothers that are here too. Uh, one of one of our deputies, uh, Steve Lowe's. I just want to uh, I just want to mention Steve's name here tonight. Had a terrible accident on Saturday, um, and uh, uh, Steve walked out of the hospital that same day. And uh, I think that's probably a uh, uh, that that is a blessing. His answered prayer, and uh, uh, just want to mention Steve's name and Sheriff. I appreciate you keeping us informed about uh, what was going on with Steve. Um, one thing I wanted to mention too, and Sheriff, I'd like to maybe at some point have you come back to us uh, as we see things happening across the country with our law enforcement. Um, uh, it, it, at some point. Uh, we might want to hear, Sheriff, what you guys are doing to, and I don't mean to have a soliloquy with the Sheriff here, to to uh, make sure that you guys are sensitive to what's happening out in the public. I mean, we saw this thing down in Texas with this law enforcement officer. Our guys are on the, are on the battle lines every day, and I don't think it's just it's just our law enforcement. I think it's our EMS, our fire folks. Uh, we as a county have got to be sensitive to the things that are happening in the culture around us as it relates to them and uh, and give uh, uh, more than 100% support to them. And um, uh, I would just say to you guys, since you're here, Brian, Sheriff, uh, please keep us informed of the things that are going on here in Davie County that relate to your uh, your guys' safety, even outside of your of the normal uh, the normal uh, problems that you have uh, on the job that just that just concerns me, and I just wanted to bring that bring that forward. I uh, also wanted to thank the folks. Uh, I think Dan and Terry was at the event for the Hospital Foundation and the donation they gave. 
uh, to uh, the community college as it relates to the training that's going to go at, on at the old Davy County Hospital. I think that was um, that was outstanding, and uh, just want to thank them, and uh, that that just goes a long way. Uh, to support uh, why Davie County is such a great place to live, to be for our kids to be educated, and uh, uh, to raise a family. And uh, I spoke to the guys in the very back, back there. Uh, a lot of our department heads are back here, and we really appreciate y'all being here every month, hearing what's happening, and uh, and we certainly thank the citizens of Davie County for being here and uh, being a part of this. Uh, being a part of what we do because it's it is it's extremely important. Thank you so much, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Poindexter. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'd just like to thank everybody for being here tonight. That's nice to see a lot of faces out in the crowd. Uh, I'd like to thank the congratulate the EMS again on their award uh, as far as being able to get uh, this county up to where we should be in, in taking care of its citizens. And I'd like to thank all staff. I know there's a lot of people out there that are having a very difficult time and working very hard to get these things done that need to be done for the citizens. Thank you. Mr. Barrett. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I, too, would like to thank everyone for coming um, and for participating in this process. It's not always pretty, but uh, um, it's, it's democracy at work. Um, I'd like to say a special word of appreciation to EMS for that uh, wonderful recognition and for all you do to protect us here in Davie County. But I'd also like to say that, you know, we have so many good news stories with, with our uh, different county agencies and departments. And um, I commend all of you for the hard work you do. Um, I, I think it'd be great to have uh, good news stories like uh, the EMS story. Um, on a regular basis here in our commission meeting so we and the citizens can uh, learn more about the different great activities that are going on here in the county and so people can understand the things that are happening. Um, and I want to echo too what Mark said about the, uh, the repurposing of the hospital here in Moxville. I think it's very important that we, uh, that we repurpose the hospital for, for for good uses like the community college is doing to train the healthcare workers of the future. Uh, what a wonderful uh, opportunity we have there to, uh, to provide an avenue for employment for many people, uh, to provide skilled workers for the, for the new Davie Medical Center and for other healthcare institutions. I mean, what a wonderful thing that we can do here. Uh, and I know that that uh, you know, it's it's a major undertaking to continue to uh, to bring that hospital building back to life. But I think it's very important for for the town of Moxville and for the county as a whole that that building uh, continue to be of service to the citizens of Davie County. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Ferguson. Well, I'm sure you all have heard enough of me tonight. But again, I would like to thank everyone for being here and. We always appreciate the people coming out and all of our employees, the EMS, uh, the group, sheriff, all of them, all of our departments do an excellent job. And I get comments all the time from somebody about a county employee, what they've done for them. And uh, it, it is very appreciative to hear that. I have not heard more than one complaint since I have been in, in this, I've been here now, I guess this is my ninth month. And it's very uh, comforting to hear people think that their county employees are doing a good job for them. Thank you all. Thank you. I'd like to, as always, thank everyone for coming out and staying with us here um, as we work through the issues before us. Uh, but, uh, you know, as the county, as we continue to become, we all know that great David County is a great place to live and it's going to become more and more attractive. And as that happens, you know, I think the, we're going to see more of the agriculture and the residential communities need to work together. And I think that was kind of brought to fruition there over the past several months with this composting issue. And I think the resolution that was resolved on that can best be described as everyone wound up working together. And I think that's very important. And on that point, I just want to thank our staff, our 
zoning people. I want to thank the planning board and I want to thank the board of adjustments for working through that process and are working to resolve the matter. And um, with that, again, thanks for being here. And at this time, we are going to go into, I will entertain a motion to go into closed, closed session pursuant to general North Carolina General Statute 143-318-11-A3 and 6 to consult with the attorney employed or retained by the public body in order to preserve the attorney-client privilege between the attorney and the public body and B, to consider the qualifications, competence, performance, character, fitness, conditions of appointment, or conditions of initial employment of an individual public officer or employee or prospective public officer or employee. Would someone like to make that motion? So moved. Second. Second. We are in closed session. We will uh, come back out after closed session is over. Thank you for being here.